He's married to an Iraqi lady. One day I gave him as a present, I have five volumes of the Middle East between the world wars. And in volume two, the, two there is a discussion of uh, Iraq in the 1920s. And later he came to me and he said, you don't know what happened in the family because of that. His mother-in-law from Iraq, she saw the picture. Alliance School in Baghdad, 1928, five Jewish girls with tennis rackets. <laughs> and she summoned all the family and she said, when you in Poland, you didn't know even what sport is all about. We played tennis in Baghdad already. Girls. <laughs> it's very educational. Uh, uh, and thank you for, for the, uh, keeping the evidence of the Jewish life uh, in, in Arab countries in the good old days. Uh, our next speaker uh, is Eddie Cohen. He's a research fellow at Bar Ilan University, Nachem's Begin Center for the Study of Resistant Movements since October 19, uh, 2013. Uh, he has a book coming, I forgot the name. The Mufti and the Jews. The Mufti and the Jews. Can't be more telling than this. And they will be talking about Radio Berlin in Arabic, the first Nazi radio in Arabic language. Eddie, please. Hello, good afternoon. I search my presentation. Please, can I get your help? Okay. <coughs> from Berlin and from Greece, the Nazi regime broadcasted during World War II thousands of hours of shortwave radio programs in Arabic language with the aim of winning the support of the Arab population in their leaders and also to diffuse its ideology in Arabic through North Africa and the Middle East. The main aim of this propaganda also was to stir unrest in the local population, make it difficult for the allies to maintain order in order to facilitate the political and economic penetration of the Middle Eastern markets. In April 39, the first German radio station broadcasting in Arabic was opened in the town of Zissen in Berlin. From 39 to spring 45, it broadcast its daily Arabic language program and reached out to all the Arabs in the Middle East and in North Africa. Radio Berlin broadcasted five times a day. Each program lasted 45 minutes in the lot of authors and well-known Arabic public figures such uh, um, the Mufti of Jerusalem, Rashid Al Galiani, began to broadcast and be interviewed by the Berlin station. This station quickly became very popular from among the other stations in Europe that also broadcast in Arabic, such as Radio Bari from Italy and the uh, Radio BBC from London. The Italians uh, broadcasted in Radio Barry in the BBC from London. These radio programs were often, the Radio Berlin in Arabic was, were often heard in cafes and other public places and were crucial to the propaganda effort in the Middle East. This propaganda had a great impact by Arabs and Muslims. The message included in the propaganda broadcasted were meant to serve various ends winning Arab sympathy for the Nazis in the Führer Al-Zaim in Arabic, accusing the Jews, the common enemy, of robbing Arabs of their money and of causing all the destruction in the Arab world, supporting Arab nationalist aspirations, incitement against British and French rule and against the West in general, the reinforcement of nationalist sentiments and promising to grant independence to every Arab country, Radio Berlin in Arabic remained in existence until the end of the war, spring 45. Nazi radio propaganda attacked Britain in the United States in particular for the support 
they supposedly gave to the establishment of the Jewish state of a Jewish state in Palestine. Nazi propaganda included also the promise of military support, armed supplies, and training of Arabs in their struggle against the British and the Jews. The most important public voice of Nazi Germany, Arabic language propaganda, was the leading Iraqi broadcaster Yunus Bahri, who ran Radio Berlin first, uh, first ever Arabic language service until the end of the world. Bahri, who was an Iraqi journalist exiled in Berlin because his anti-British activities in Iraq, was appointed by Goebbels to run this station. His familiarity with Dr. Fritz Groba, former German ambassador in Iraq, facilitated him to get the job. Bahri also speak, spoke German. It's hard to believe how popular Bahri was in the Middle East. Radio Berlin had a wide range and was heard clearly in the Middle East and in North Africa. Uh, Bahri had a pleasant voice and excellent diction. He knew how to flavor his programs with witty remarks and cynicism. Bahri always began with his slogan, which began the slogan of the Radio Berlin. Huna Berlin, Hayul Arab. This is Berlin, long live for the, the Arabs. This long, and then he continued with the verse of the Quran, from the Quran, in order to make a connection between the propaganda and the religion. Followed sometimes by Nasheed Palestine, the Palestinian national anthem. By this approach, it's the way by which the Nazi regime was hoping to gain Arab support and fuel anti-British sentiment among Arabs, exploiting the problems of Palestinians, which was a way of inciting Arab populations worldwide to rely against the Jews in the Middle East and North Africa. So, what were the messages of uh, Radio Berlin in Yunus Bahri? I read some 600 documents from the French archives, and I will uh, briefly uh, speak about the main messages. The World War II is a Jewish war. The greedy imperialism war, which was bound to, to rob the Arabs on his way health. Germany is your ally. Germany is the great friend of the Arabs. Je the Jews are the tools of the British imperialism. The Jew is the enemy of the Islam and the, the Muslim. The communist ideology is a Jewish ideology. And it's opposed to everything for which the Muslims' religion stood. God has sent Germany, the just and great nation, to punish the Jews and the imperialists, and also to save the Arabs. In his program, Roosevelt was represented as Jewish, in the United States as the United Jewish Nations. Allied victory <laughs> would mean Jewish domination of the Middle East. The Jews aim at extending their domination throughout the Arab countries, but their future depends on a British victory. The conflict over Palestine came to occupy a central place in its wartime broadcast. The Jews were intending to combine Palestine with Syria in Transjordanian in a huge Jewish home. Britain's main aim in the Middle East was to annihilate the Arabs entirely and to aid in, his, in this purpose, large number of Jews are being enlisted in a Palestinian army. When the Nazis invaded Greece in April 41, they established two radio stations that broadcasted also to the Arab world. These stations broadcasted from Athens, the Arab National Radio and the Voice of Free Ab Arabism. Very little has been written about this radio, which has not yet been sufficiently addressed. These broadcasts were against the British and also against the Jews, the American, and the French. So, how did this radio incite against the Jews? I will speak, we spoke this morning about the Farhud, and now I will, can tell you what were the messages, what the Muslims in Iraq in 41 heard from Radio Berlin. 75 years ago, influenced by the Nazi propaganda, thousands of Muslims attacked the Jews of Baghdad, murdering men, women, and children, raping women and girls, and plundering property. The Investigate Committee for the Assessment of the Farhud Massacre was created by the Iraqi government immediately following the massacre. From the results, it became clear that the Nazi propaganda, which was broadcast from Berlin, 
was one of the main causes of the annihilation of Iraqi Jewry. The constant incitement against the Jews gave the justification and the rationalization to murder them. Four days prior to the Farhud, 26 of May 41, Yunus Bahri from Berlin, in Arabic language, he broadcasted the following program saying, Judaism, con Judaism consists of Zionism and Masonism, which found shelter in England behind which it commits its crimes. The Arab people fought against the Jews and expelled them from the Saudi Peninsula 14 years ago. Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, was the first to drive them out. The Arabs saw during the Korean period what Jews did under English protection. The Jews declared that they want to create a national homeland in the land of Palestine, which is inseparable from the Arab homeland. Iraqi Arabs today are witness of what the Jews of Basra, in the south of Iraq, carried out under the instruction of the British. The Arabs paid attention to the declaration of British statesmen, who said that England owe a debt of gratitude to the Jews for their help during the war. This statement encouraged the Jews to fight against the Arabs, being sure that after the war, they would be allow, allowed to create a Jewish state. Now, Jews, Jews everywhere are an abomination. Remember the passage in the Quran, the biggest enemies of mankind are those who believe in Jews. Ladies and gentlemen, this is four days before the Farhud, and today in the morning I heard the question if the Farhud is a Nazi event or no. From my point of view, it's 100% a Nazi event. Also after the, the Farhud, Yudas Bahri justified it, and he said that the Jew, Jew, Jews of Iraq gave the British Embassy information about the Iraqi army. The Jews of Iran, he said, he claimed that collaborated with the British propaganda. El Alamein. During the El Alamein battle in summer 42, until November 42, Berlin in Arabic, the radio by, by by its announcer, Yunus Bahari, incited against the Jews, especially against the Jews of Egypt. The ex mufti of Jerusalem broadcasted, let's fight the common enemy, the British and the Jews. Yunus Bahari broadcasted in one of his programs in July 42, that a large number of Jewish residing, residing in Egypt have been issued with revolvers and ammunition. Therefore, we think it best, I quote his, from his program, if the life of the Egyptian nation to be saved, the Egyptian rise as one man to kill Jadu, the Jews before they have a chance of betraying the Egyptian people. It's the duty of the Egyptian to annihilate the Jews and to destroy, the, to destroy their property. Egypt can never forget that it's the Jews who are carrying out Britain's imperialist policy in the Arab country. In, what, in that, that they are the source, source of all the disasters which have fallen the countries of the East. Rumors' victory in the region would lead to the expulsion of the Jews from Egypt. Another program in August 42, Yunus Bahri and the other radio station in Aten uh, broadcasted, you must kill the Jews before they open fire on you. Kill the Jews who have appropriated your health, wealth, and who are plotting against your security. Arabs of Egypt, Syria, Iraq, and Palestine, what are you waiting for? The Jews are planning to violate your women, to kill your children, and to destroy you. According to the Muslim religion, the defense of your life is a duty which can be fulfilled by annihilating the Jews. This is your best opportunity to get rid of this dirty race, which has absorbed your rights and brought misfortune and destruction on your country. Kill the Jews, burn their property, destroy their stores, annihilate these bad supporters of British imperialism. Your sole hope of salvation lies in annihilating the Jews before they annihilate you. As you can see, 
Egypts and in Iraqi Jewry suffered the most from the Nazi propaganda, and this is one of uh, the programs that uh, broadcasted uh, six years every day incitement against the Jews of the Middle East, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and all the Arab countries. Radio Berlin also recruited so-called journalists. These journalists were spies. The military correspondents of Radio Berlin were spies. They received secret encoded messages from Yunus Bahri from Berlin. Bahri also, during his programs, gave instruction to those spies that were sent into Arab capitals. They collected military information and organized demonstrations and acts of sabotage. This information were sent to the Nazi headquarters. Propaganda by means of printed material. As part of psychological warfare, use was made of printed material that included leaflets, caricatures, and adverts in the local press. Here the propaganda message was printed on, on a fake dollar bills or pound notes dropped for, from the plane, promising the Arab freedom from the British and the French. These messages often include included anti-Semitic propaganda and Jews hater. These are the caricatures. In this one, this, this is the Nazi ideology in Arabic. The news agency World Dines World Service that collaborated with the Institute for Research on the Qu uh, Jewish Question headed by Alfred Rosenberg. This bulletin was uh, published in 18 languages in the Mufti of Jerusalem who himself asked Rosenberg to, to allow him to translate these uh, materials to Arabic, to Arabic in order to send them to the Arab world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Nazi ideology, so-called Nazi research that were bring, brought out to the Arabi Arabic in the Middle East in North Africa. These are the banknotes bank note that I spoke about them. This is a Nazi propaganda lift, uh, leaflet written in the, probably in the Arab Bureau, uh, das, das Arabisch, der Großmufti, the Bureau of the Großmufti in Berlin. It included always anti-Semitic uh, messages against the Jews in each leaflet. This is one pound. This is one dollar, this is one pound, Nazi propaganda leaflet. So, what became of Yunus Bahri? Last, last year, when I was in Paris, I found a letter, eight page letter, that Yunus Bahri wrote to the uh, French president or the French leader, uh, uh, Charles de Gaulle. He begged him to collaborate with him, to allow him to work with their secret agency. Yunus Bahri was caught by the French and, be, and uh, collaborated with the French two days after he was caught in May uh, 45. In uh, the eyes of the Arabs, until now, if you write his name in Arabic in Google, he was very, he is admired. For, for their point of view, he, he was against the colonialism, but in fact, he betrayed them and collaborated with the French. I thought this letter uh, last year, and, uh, when I will publish it, he will be no more such a hero in the eyes of the Arab because he, he himself collaborated with the French people. As you can see, Bahri is with the Anwar Sadat. After the war, he becomes la as a hero, as I said, and here in the picture, I think, Frank, it's Bashar al-Khuri. It's the prime minister of Lebanon, uh, president, ex-president of Lebanon in Anwar Sadat, isn't it? Yunus Bahri, anyway, died in Iraq in 75 after, he, he, in 79, sorry. In his memoirs, I'm the first Arab who collaborated with the Nazis. I collaborated with them during four, uh, 14 years. Yunus Bahri met Goebbels in 31. So he had the relationship, he had a relationship, he, he, he collaborated with the Nazis 
14 years in his life. He also wrote, I was scolded by the propaganda office and by the Joseph Goebbels because I always included the expressing criminal Jews in my broadcast. That means that he was more cruel than the Nazis. This is what he said himself in his memoir. This is his book, Huna Berlin, Hayel Arab. This is Berlin, Long Live Arabs. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, ask a question. What would have been the fate of the 800,000 of Jewish in Palestine in the Arab world if Rommel had won the battle of El Alamein? I, I will quote f the, from uh, the Mufti's memoir. The Mufti's memoir is in Arabic and never translated to any language. In Germany, it's the Jewish of the Middle East. In Germany, I made an effort to provide within my capability modest assistance in support of our Palestinian cause and in behalf of other Arab countries and some other Islamic countries. I strove to call on all those who are devoted to the cause of Palestine and Arab causes to cooperate with Germany, not for the sake of Germany or out of fidelity to Nazism, the principle of which I do not embrace it never thought of adopting, but rather because I was sure, and I'm still sure, that if the Germans in the Axis countries had been victorious, not a trace of the Zionists would have remained in Palestine in the Arab countries. This is uh, what would have been the face of the Jewish of the Middle East. This is our subject, the Jewish of the Middle East in the shadow of the Holocaust. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, very thought-provoking. Chaim, we have time? Ten minutes. So, so let me first say uh, that uh, propaganda is propaganda, and uh, Nazi policy and attitudes were well known and expressed also by Yunus al-Bakhri and others, and Khajamin. Uh, but uh, Arab and Islamic attitudes to the Jews stood on their own tradition and feet, nationalistically from a pan-Arab, Palestinian, whatever you want, religiously from a Islamic concepts, and of course politically the struggle over, uh, over Palestine. It was not Nazi. Na Nazism cannot be international movement. It's very, very self-nationalist. And Nazism was essentially anti-religious anti and went against the grain of Islamic culture. So we have to distinguish and remain scholarly about it. Now, let's take a few questions and then one round of answers. Please. Please uh, uh, do write down the questions. Uh, we know that in Germany, the war progressed, millions of Germans stopped listening to German radio German, and listened to foreign stations, especially the BBC. Uh, do you know if uh, Radio Berlin in Arabic maintained this kind of popularity among in the Middle East as the war is progressing and people are seeing that the news on the Thank you. No, no. Okay, write down. Esti.
Okay. Alexander, no? Thank you. Dan? Thank, thank you. The very last one, the lady, please. Any question addressed to Jean? <laughs> okay, we, we go in reverse order. Eddie, you start, then Joel, then... I haven't heard all the questions, but I will uh, uh, try to, uh, uh, to answer it. First of all, my sources are from the Israeli archive in the French archives. The scholarship uh, Jeffrey, Je uh, Jeffrey had relied on the British and American he of the, the Nazi propaganda from the Arab world. He relied on British and American uh, documents. I relied on the... Uh, Israeli in French archives. Second, uh, about the influence of, of Radio Berlin, um, I've interviewed last year uh, Ole Hadash, an immigrant who was 21st, who was 20 years old while the Farhood occurred. He heard this propaganda, he heard this radio. He told me, and I've recorded it, that, the, that all the Iraqis listened radio Berlin, but only the Iraqis, the Jewish Iraqis, listened to BBC. And he confirmed that this radio was very popular. Besides this, I have British, British report from the police that said that these, these, these Arabs in the, in the cafe waited the time of Yunus Bahri in, 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 impatiently to hear his voice among the, all the other stations into real propaganda.